Hi everyone and welcome to Joe Reviews. How accurate is Apple Watch Series 10 at calculating VO2 max? That's the question we're answering today. I just started training for my first marathon coming up in June. As I'm beginning my training, I want to see where my VO2 max is now to try and get a baseline figure. Then I want to check it again after all this training and the marathon to see how much of a difference, if any, it has made to my VO2 max. Anyone who has used an Apple Watch to track workouts has probably seen in the health app a section called Cardio Fitness. Here it shows your VO2 max and where you fall in comparison to other people in your age group. So what do I hope to gain from doing this comparison? One, I want to know my VO2 max in the most accurate way. Number two, I want to know how accurate my Apple Watch is compared to a laboratory test. And three, I hope to find out if I can just rely on my Apple Watch to know my VO2 max. VO2 max can basically tell a person what type of cardiovascular shape they're in. According to Peter Atia, if your VO2 max is in the low bottom 25th percentile, and you're able to bring it to just the below average, which is the 25th to 50th percentile, you reduce the risk of all-cause mortality by 50%, which basically means a person with a below average VO2 max is half as likely to die for any reason as a person with a low VO2 max. So what is VO2 max? Well, the V represents volume and O2 represents oxygen. It's the rate at which your muscles can extract oxygen from your blood and put it to metabolic use. The harder your muscle works, the more oxygen is required, which causes you to breathe harder. The more oxygen your body can use to generate energy, the longer and harder you can endure an aerobic workout. It also tells you how well your heart can push blood throughout the body. Your VO2 max number is measured in milliliters of oxygen consumed per kilogram of body weight per minute of exercise. Okay, as mentioned, I just started my marathon training for this summer. Currently, I run about six days a week for a total of around 20 to 30 miles a week. With that said, I'm still a relatively new runner. I just got back into running about 18 months ago after not running for well over a decade. For setting up this VO2 max test, I looked for a lab that was closest to me by literally searching for a VO2 max test near me. It brought me to this company called Fitnessity, who I also used to schedule a DEXA scan through and compared that with a winning scale which is linked below if you'd like to watch. I have no affiliation or earn any commission for mentioning Finesity. They pretty much act as a booking site and offer a dashboard for your results. They don't own the testing locations. My location was at UW-Eau Claire at their kinesiology department. Before arriving for the test, there were a few guidelines. Number one, no exercising 24 hours before the test. Two, make sure to be properly hydrated. And three, no heavy meals two to three hours before the test. So nothing major to prepare, some pretty common sense guidelines. Once there, I got fitted with a heart rate monitor. To take the test, I could choose to either ride a stationary bike or use the treadmill. I chose a treadmill since that's what I'm most comfortable on. Then I did a light five minute jog to warm up. After that, I got fitted with a mouthpiece. This part was a little different from what I was expecting. In other videos and pictures of people completing this test, they usually have what looks like an oxygen mask over their mouths. Typically, that is connected to a pack that they wear for taking measurements. For my test, I had this tube that went in my mouth that connected to a piece of headgear. To ensure that you only breathe through your mouth, I had this clip that went over my nose, which made it impossible to breathe through it. What I liked about this way of testing is I didn't have to wear the pack. The tube that went from my mouthpiece was held in the air by a cable and then fed into the machine for the measurements. When first getting fitted with a tube and mouthpiece, I thought it would be uncomfortable to run in, but after a minute or two, I didn't even really think about it. The biggest downside of this mouthpiece is that there is this spit trap to collect your saliva, and if it fills up, then you end up drooling all over yourself, which is exactly what happened to me. We had to swap it out before getting too far into the testing. We started out at a light jog, a pace that felt easy for me that I could run for a while. I initially thought that we'd start out slow and I just keep gradually building up speed, which is basically what we did. But there's also another option. I could choose whether to increase the speed or incline. I was told most people start out choosing to increase the speed and then later choose to increase the incline. Not sure if they feel increasing incline is easier later on, but was told most people go this route. I didn't really have a plan for how I was going to choose between speed and incline. After running for about 30 seconds to a minute, I'd have to choose speed by raising my right hand or incline by raising my left hand. Gradually, we kept increasing the speed and I'd raise my right hand. I did choose to increase the incline once just to see how that felt. I found that I preferred picking up speed versus incline. As I was getting to what felt like the peak, there were a few thoughts running through my mind. Number one, I was getting tired and finding it difficult to keep up with the speed and incline, but I didn't know if I was at my limit or if I could keep going. I really didn't want to stop, even if there was a little bit of gas left in the tank. And number two, I didn't want to fall off the treadmill. That was in the back of my mind, pushing too hard and just falling down. 
I asked if anyone had fallen yet and was told no. So I didn't want to be the first. I finally decided to quit. To stop, I just had to lift myself off the treadmill. Then we took the tube out and I did a cool down walk on the treadmill for about five minutes. I got my VO2 max result right away and the rest of the results a couple days later. I registered a VO2 max of 53.9. I was just hoping to get above 50, so I'm happy with that. Leaves me with some room to improve. Okay, so I completed the lab test and got my result. How does this compare with my Apple Watch? I'll get to that result in a minute. First, I think it's helpful to see how I tested my VO2 max on my Apple Watch. There are three different exercises you can do in the workout app to track your VO2 max. Outdoor run, outdoor walk, and hiking. Apple Watch records an estimate of your VO2 max by measuring heart rate and using the motion sensors during one of these three workouts. In addition to these two measurements, it takes into account your age, sex, weight, height, and medications that might affect your heart rate. It can give you an estimate between the range of 14 and 65, so there may be some people that are simply out of this range and won't see a benefit of using Apple Watch to estimate their VO2 max. I decided to try all three workouts and see if there was much of a difference between the results in each workout versus my lab test. Unfortunately, the only workouts that can estimate VO2 max are outside workouts. As I, for some reason, decided to do this in January in Wisconsin, I meant doing these workouts on a couple balmy 12 degree days. First, I did the hiking workout. I went for a half mile hike, which ended up taking me about 17 minutes. Felt like I went further than that. My VO2 max result from that was a 48.7. Next, I went for an outdoor walk a few days later. This was a little shorter than my hike at 0.43 miles with 11.32 workout time. I had the same result, a 48.7. This really shouldn't be surprising as I basically walked the same path I did for the outdoor hike. And there's not too much difference in how Apple Watch takes measurements during a walk versus a hike. Then the next day, I did an outdoor run. Before starting the run, I felt like my VO2 max would change with this workout and would more closely resemble that which I registered in the lab. I ran a little over a mile and it included some steep hills, which helped give me an average heart rate of 145 versus about 80 for the hike and walk. With the run complete, I scored a 49.1. All three results ended up being about five off from my lab test or about 10% lower than what was recorded in the lab. I decided I need to try the run again and try and model it more closely to what I did in the lab. In total, I ran for about 14 minutes on the treadmill in the lab and really picked up speed towards the end. I decided I would start out slowly and then slowly crank up the speed after about five minutes. As mentioned, near my place, the roads are fairly hilly, but that's good as I'll be able to push my heart rate up. At least this next time I ran, the weather was a little warmer at 25 degrees. In total, I ran for close to 12 minutes and pushed to what felt like mere exhaustion at the end. Despite my best effort, I had the same result as the last run with the VO2 max of 49.1. Really shouldn't be too surprised by these results. The Apple Watch is estimating VO2 max based off of heart rate and motion sensors. Plus, it's doing all this in such a small form factor from the wrist. I think it's impressive that it can get as close as it does. In the end, I think the Apple Watch does provide a fairly accurate reading of VO2 max it will probably get you a result that's close to what your actual VO2 max is. But if you want the most accurate results, then you're better off finding a testing lab near you. I still plan on doing another VO2 max test after my marathon, but it'll be interesting to see if my results from the watch will still be off by the same amount that it is now. Time will tell. I think Apple Watch provides a reading that'll be accurate for most people, but what do you think? Is being off by 10% too much? Or do you think that's an acceptable error of margin? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you for the next video.